solid-state technology promises to solve the biggest weaknesses of lithium-ion batteries. Energy density, charging speed, lifespan, and safety are all areas where lithium-ion struggles, but here is a reality that cannot be ignored. Until today, there have been no vehicles in real production using solid-state batteries, not a single one at scale, and none delivered to everyday customers. Today, however, we are witnessing what is being presented as a historic moment. Because Donut Battery is being described as the world's first solid-state battery used in production vehicles that are shipping directly to customers, a recent post on X dated January 5, 2026 clearly stated that Donut Lab's fully solid-state, non-toxic thermally stable high-performance battery is real and scalable. According to the statement, the sodium-ion-based chemistry of the battery does not depend on lithium or cobalt to operate. From the very beginning, it is important to be honest. If even half of what Donut Lab claims turns out to be accurate, this would not be a small step forward in battery design, it would represent a major break from everything the industry has relied on for more than 30 years. No lithium, no rare earth metals, a full charge in 5 minutes, and a lifespan of up to 100,000 cycles or nearly 100 years of use. That combination alone explains why this announcement has sent strong shockwaves through the battery world and why a small, newly emerging startup like Donut Lab is being watched very closely and very cautiously by major players such as Toyota, Samsung, SDI and QuantumScape whether they admit it publicly or not. This development has already placed Donut Lab several years ahead of them in certain areas of research. The key question then becomes why anyone should trust this semi-solid state battery when Donut Lab has not released public patents related to it. Is this truly a chemical battery meant for electric vehicles, or is it closer to a pseudo-supercapacitor or a hybrid energy storage device? For people with technical backgrounds, especially those who have followed battery research since the early days of nickel-cadmium cells and first-generation lithium-ion batteries, Skepticism is not just reasonable, it is required. The battery industry has promised revolutions many times before. Most of those promises never left the lab. Some of them never really existed at all. Instead of reacting with blind excitement or immediate rejection, the only sensible response is to look closely at the contradictions. Interestingly, when these contradictions are examined carefully, some of the most controversial aspects surrounding Donut Lab may suggest a technology that does not fit neatly into existing categories, rather than one that is simply impossible. The first major shock is the question itself. Is this even a battery? One of the most intense debates to come out of CES 2026 focused on the claim that Donut Lab's device may not be a true battery at all, but instead a pseudo-capacitor or a hybrid storage system. On the surface, this criticism sounds serious. A full charge in 5 minutes and a lifespan of 100,000 cycles are classic traits of capacitors, not traditional batteries. Conventional electrochemical batteries rely on the slow movement of ions into electrode materials. That process takes time and gradually damages the internal structure. Capacitors, on the other hand, store charge on surfaces and can operate for extremely long periods. So critics naturally ask, if it behaves like a capacitor, then is it really just a capacitor? In reality, while capacitors do charge quickly and last a long time, they fail badly in one critical area, energy density. Even the most advanced supercapacitors usually stay below 10 to 20 watt-hours per kilogram. Donut Lab, by contrast, claims an energy density of around 400 watt-hours per kilogram that is nearly double Tesla's best cylindrical cells and far beyond what current LFP or sodium ion batteries can deliver. If Donut Lab's battery truly uses an amorphous ceramic structure, such as amorphous titanium dioxide, then the usual trade-offs may not apply in the same way. That alone could explain the extremely long cycle life without relying on unrealistic or science fiction ideas. The most emotionally charged moment in the entire Donut Lab story did not come from chemistry debates or density numbers, but from what people physically saw, or more accurately, what they did not see at CES 2026. In an industry that depends heavily on visible proof, the lack of a working battery cell on one of the world's biggest technology stages immediately raised alarms. Visitors saw modules, casings, and carefully designed housings, but no cells actively charging, discharging, heating, or powering devices in real time. For engineers, researchers, and long-time observers of battery hype, this absence triggered an almost automatic response. History has taught the tech community to associate empty displays with exaggerated promises. Comparisons to past scandals like Theranos appeared quickly, not out of bad intent, but because the pattern felt familiar. When a company claims it is weeks away from shipping a revolutionary product but cannot show a single working unit under neutral conditions, skepticism becomes almost unavoidable. However, Stopping the analysis at that point would oversimplify a much more complex situation. Donut Lab made it clear that its goal at CES was not to convince the general public. 
From the start, the company focused on original equipment manufacturers rather than retail buyers or journalists. According to Donut Lab and reporting from Aletbeck, fully working battery packs have already been delivered to OEMs and authorized research groups under strict non-disclosure agreements. These partners are reportedly allowed to test performance factors such as charge speed, cycle life, thermal stability, and power output. But they are not allowed to open the cells or publicly describe the internal structure. This difference matters because it shifts the CES controversy from a question of existence to a question of access. If Donut Lab's statements are correct, the batteries are not missing. They are simply not available for public viewing. From a competitive perspective, this strategy is not as irrational as it might first seem. In the battery industry, especially when claims involve abandoning lithium and rare metals, revealing internal designs even briefly can erase years of hard-earned advantage. Reverse engineering is not a possibility, it is a certainty. Donut Lab CEO openly admitted that competitors will eventually buy Verge motorcycles, dismantle the battery packs, and study every layer and interface. His argument is not that this will never happen, but that delaying it by even a few weeks matters. In an industry where being first can shape supplier deals, licensing talks, and long-term positioning, time itself becomes a valuable asset. From this angle, the absence of live demonstrations at CES looks less like secrecy and more like a calculated balance between openness and survival. What ultimately matters is not what sat on a display stand, but whether independent, skilled third-party testing confirms the claims once those NDAs expire. Donut Lab has tied its credibility to that timeline and repeatedly said external verification is already underway. That is a dangerous promise to make if the technology does not exist or fails to perform. Companies planning to disappear rarely attach their reputation to a verification process they do not control. This does not prove Donut Lab is right, but it does weaken the argument that the CES display alone proves deception. The controversy grows even stronger when attention shifts from what was shown to who is making the claims. Donut Lab is a small Finnish startup with a technical team said to include fewer than a dozen people. Toyota, in contrast, has spent decades and billions of dollars developing solid-state battery technology, filing thousands of patents and building massive research divisions. Toyota still talks about limited production timelines closer to 2027. Against that background, the idea that a tiny startup could leap ahead of one of the most disciplined engineering companies in the world feels almost insulting to common sense. This reaction is not purely technical. It is psychological. We are trained to believe that progress scales smoothly with money, staff, and institutional power, yet history repeatedly proves otherwise. Lithium-ion batteries themselves did not emerge fully formed from giant corporations. They came from specific breakthroughs in materials, science, often driven by small teams. Before being industrialized by large companies, scale did not create the chemistry. Scale followed once the chemistry worked. Toyota's struggle with solid-state batteries has been less about theory and more about manufacturing issues, especially the brittleness of crystalline solid electrolytes. Cracks, dendrites, and sudden failure during cycling have affected even the most well-funded programs. If Donut Lab's method truly avoids crystalline structures by using amorphous ceramics or nanostructured materials, made through unusual processes like nanofluid printing, then it may have bypassed Toyota's main obstacle instead of beating it directly. That would not mean Toyota failed. It would mean Donut Lab chose a path Toyota did not prioritize. Unusual paths almost always look suspicious at first. They break expectations, challenge known trade-offs, and lack familiar signs of legitimacy. That suspicion grows when the claims involve removing lithium entirely. Lithium dominates modern batteries not because of branding, but because of basic electrochemistry. Its low atomic weight and high potential allow high voltage and high energy density. Remove lithium and traditional battery equations fall apart. This is why sodium ion zinc-based anilu.